Um, let's see. Uh, what do I want to talk about first? I want to talk about all the things there is to do here. There are a lot. And if y'all see my eyes, like the weather's changing here and something is blooming. So my eyes are like, I've been scratching all day. So they look crazy. I have not been crying. I'm actually great. We'll get to that later too. Um, so anyway, um, there is so much to do here. It is overwhelming. I'm going to be honest. Uh, there's something for everybody. I'm not a party person. I'm basically homework church, and I may hit a couple of events here and there. Uh, but there is a ton of stuff here to do, whether you are a child, whether you're a young adult, whether you're a teenager, where it does family. There's something for everybody here. If you want to be bougie, they got something for you. If you want to be ratchet, they got something for you. If you want the hood, if you want whatever your flavor is, Houston is for you. I love it here. The only thing I don't love, I'm kind of used to the heat now because I'm not in it all like that. So, uh, let's see. The heat is okay. Like, I'm in and out. Um, let's see. I love my church. I attend Lighthouse Church with uh, Pastor Keon Henderson and Shawnee Henderson. Great church. I'm well fed there. Um, speaking of fed, the food here. Um, okay, so let me just say this. There are a ton of uh, restaurants here in Houston. And for those who don't follow me, please follow me on Fat Girl Food Anista. Fat Girl is P-H-A-T, Fat Girl Food Anista. I have been to a lot of restaurants since I've touched down here. And the ones that are like highlighted like on TikTok, IG, not all of them, but a lot of the ones that I have been to, they have been really mid to nasty. I know, I know. So one of the things for me is I'm not a big fan of Creole food, Louisiana food. That's gumbo. That just not my thing. Matter of fact, I've only had gumbo once. And I don't even remember tasting it. It was years and years ago. But a lot of the people from that live in Houston have migrated from Louisiana. So um, a lot of the base of the food here is that type of food. I'm not a big fan. Uh, it took me a long time to find a soul food restaurant here. I know there's a lot, but I still haven't even scratched the surface with restaurants. So I don't want to just say overall, I've had some really great restaurants. I've had some really nasty ones. Like one of the ones that people say are super, like it's super duper good is I think it's called Timmy Chan's. It's trash. Like the one that I had, throw it in the trash. It was not good. I'm not a big barbecue person, so I cannot speak on the barbecue. Uh, I'm going to branch out as the time goes, but I live here, so I don't have to be in a rush to eat everywhere. There literally is any kind of restaurant you want on every corner here, like 10 of them. Uh, what was I going to say next? Uh, the people here. Y'all, so... Um, I've never experienced people like I have here, especially our people, black folks. I feel like every black person that I come into contact, and I'm not kidding, like I know I exaggerate a lot, but I feel like every black person that I come into contact here are my aunts and uncles. I'm serious. Uh, it feels like family here. Um, everybody for the most part is nice and I'm not even going to say black people I'm going to say people period um, Esther's I have not and I heard that the base of them are cre is Creole too like Louisiana type food and I just got finished talking about that which I don't care for Creole food I will um, or like Louisiana style I'm not a big fan of that and I heard Esther's is that but I will go check them out I have not as of yet but like I was just saying I live here so it's like it's it's a trillion restaurants here. Like I'm not playing. There's 800 black owned restaurants just in Houston, the city of Houston by itself. 800 black owned restaurants just in the city of Houston. We're not even talking about uh, the other places like North, South, East, West. Like the yeah. Uh, so got plenty of time. They're on the list, but they kind of like on the bottom because when I saw it was that Louisiana style, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> we gonna see. Uh, but the people here, like even not even just the black people, but the people here in general, uh, it feels like heaven here. And when I say heaven, I mean there is literally uh, different types of people here uh, from all over the world. So it is a melting pot. You don't just see black and me 
I'm sorry, Nicole. I listen. Uh, but I didn't say they were all bad. I just, you know, got to get used to it. Uh, but uh, the people here generally are just very, very nice. Like it's almost weird that they're just nice. And I don't care what color they are. They hold the door open for you. They speak to you. One of the things that I have to get used to is speaking back to people. So typically when people speak, they'll be like, hey, how you doing? And I'll be like, fine. But then they'll be like, well, how's your day? Like most people ask, how was your day? So they continue the conversation where I like stop at, I'm fine. But then they want to have a short conversation. That is most people here. Uh, which I absolutely love, but I got to get used to it. So in general, everybody is very nice, very helpful. The black folks here feel like family, your auntie, your uncle, your granny, your cousin. Like, it's just like you've known them. It feels like home, but it does for me anyway. It felt like that in 2019 when I first came to visit. It felt like I was just at home. Uh, let's see. As far as business is concerned, if you have a business, you will thrive here. I'm going to say that again. If you have a business, you will thrive here. I'm going to say it again. If you have a business, you will thrive here. You have no choice but to thrive here. So I haven't even immersed myself in the city like for real, for real. <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a second. I have not immersed myself in the city at all, really. Uh, where I moved, it was like in the Woodlands, Conroe area. It's about 45 minutes away. Beautiful subdivision uh, in that area. Nice area. Had everything upscale. Beautiful, beautiful, but it was very expensive. My rent went, it was $2,000. It went up to $2,100 a month. Who was paying that? Not me, right? Uh, so we can go ahead and get to the homeless part because I know that's why you're on here with your nosy selves. But if you guys really know me and have watched me for a while, you know that I always have clickbait titles right to make you come back here and watch what i said right right so for the nosy people we're gonna go ahead and get to the story <laughs> so what happened is i knew my lease was up in august the end of august and i knew i needed to move so uh i for me for those who really really know me i like to try to be very proactive in making sure i have my stuff together depending on what it is but my housing, because I'm 14 hours away from my house, my hometown, and I needed to make sure that I had a roof over or have a roof over my head for myself and my daughter. I didn't come this far to fail, right? No. So um, the apartment, I haven't lived in an apartment since college. So, or, you know, I was very unaware of all the ins and outs of um, getting another apartment. So you have to give a 60-day notice. Uh, but when you give that 60-day notice, you know you're moving, but you don't really know what's available because everybody hasn't put that notice in. So it's, you know, you can, you can kind of look around, but you just you can't really get the place because it's too early. Like, and every time I would come, like a, a little over a month out there, like, it's too early, it's too early. And I'm like, no, I want to know where I'm living, like, now. But it just doesn't work that way here. So anyway, uh, toward the end of July, I found the perfect spot uh, in the area that I wanted to be in. I'm not... Um, not going to tell you where that is because I, I will get to that. So um, I found a place that was close to where I was that I wanted to move. And um, it was just a perfect mix of everything. So it still got people with money. Um, we got the every level, every class. So lower, middle, and high class. Everybody, it was where I wanted to be. The school system was really, really good. And I knew that's where I wanted to be. It was closer to the city, maybe about 15 or 20 minutes. So... Um, Found the apartment, went and applied, was approved within a week, great. Uh, but the rent, uh, when I went, was 18-something. And so she was like, so you can, you can pay this, or we do have a program. It's called the Essentials, Essentials Something Program. So what they have here, and they have them in larger cities. They do not have it in Knoxville, but they have it here uh, in Houston or Texas, period. It's called the Essentials Housing Program, I think. And so if you are considered a middle-class worker, so you know, everybody always talks about, okay, what about the middle class? Nobody helps the middle class. I'm considered middle class. Uh, so I am eligible for the Essentials Program because I make in the range of the Essential Program. So instead of me paying $1,800, I would just pay $1,200. So that was where I wanted to be. 1200 and under because I do not listen. I don't have nothing to prove here. Yes, I want a nice place to stay, a safe place to stay, but ain't nobody coming in my house like that. Like nobody came over to my other house, okay? 
<laughs> so I don't have nothing to prove. I'm not trying to live above my means. Uh, and I learned that with the last place, $2,000 a month, and they went up an extra $100. We're not doing that, right? So I said, I want to be able to pay this rent in my sleep. $1,200 or less. Bet. So when she said we have the essentials program, I was like, okay, great. We're doing a essentials program. So I applied. Now, mind you, I used to work for the state of Tennessee for over 16 years. All I dealt with was budgets. All I dealt with was like low income programs. So listen, I know what was needed, right? And I knew I was eligible, right? Uh, but what ended up happening is, is they saw my income tax statement. So they saw that I sold two of my houses. They saw that I had a business. They saw, you know, all of this stuff. But I told them all of this stuff has changed. And I really haven't even been functioning in my business like that. So this is null and void. This doesn't have anything to do with what I have going on. I was working for the state. Uh, I really haven't worked in my business. All I'm doing is Uber driving right now. Uh, my business has actually done pretty good <laughs> since I've been here. Uh, but it's still not anything that's steady. So I'm basically living off of my daughter's Social Security from her father passing away and uh, my Uber Eats. That's what I live off of, right? And I had a little bit of cushion from my houses. But that is gone. That's gone. That's gone. Kind of, sort of. That's gone. <laughs> And so I told her, I was like, look, I can provide that. So I provided everything at the end of July. I provided all of the information at the end of July because I don't like to wait to the last minute. So provided all of that, I didn't hear from them for like two weeks. I'm like, this ain't, let me make sure everything is cool because, you know, I'm going to be moving pretty soon. So I called. Uh, nobody was answering the phone. So I said, let me go down there. Went down there. And uh, what happened? They were like, hey, I need X, Y, and Z. I'm like, why didn't somebody call me? Because I could have provided this information, right? So I'm uh, naturally, I'm upset at this time, but I'm trying to be cool because, you know, you can't really, well, you can't be, well, you can, but one thing, if you want something from somebody, you better learn how to control your temper. I'm not going in there acting a, a tail, right? I'm going in there acting like I, I'm, I'm humble. I need you to do this for me, and I need to be nice about it, right? So just trying to be cool. Gave them the paperwork they needed. Came back the next day. They still said they needed all of this stuff. And I'm like, so, okay. I said, let me speak to the manager. Talk to the manager. The manager said, look, you got way too much paperwork. Because I do. Like, my taxes look crazy. She said, they're going to deny you based on this stuff. You like, got these houses on here. You got blah, blah, blah. They're going to deny you. And I'm like, but I'm eligible for it now. So she said, okay, cool. So she rips up the paperwork. She said, look, I'm going to help you. Fill the paperwork out again. This is what you need to turn in. Bet. So I'm thinking, I got my foot in the door. She says she's going to help. Turn that in. I contacted them back. I'm like, hey, what's going on with my stuff? Because by this time, I got a week and a half before it's time for me to move. They're like, well, we don't know <laughs> when this is going to get approved. Or, you know, we don't know. And I, I've listened to me. Like I told you, side note, I've worked with the state. I, I've seen this game before. When people are not concerned about your well-being and it's just a job, they don't care about you saying you got you don't have nowhere to go. And I'm telling her, look, like, I need this to be approved because I'm eligible. I already noticed I did the math. Like, I know I'm eligible. And I'm telling her, I don't have nowhere to go. So I need y'all to, she was like, well, it can take 24 hours up to a month. Don't play with me. Like, I'm in my set. I'm really like she playing in my face right now. So, anyway, I still try to be cool. I immediately go say I'm going on a fast because, Lord, I need some answers. Like, I need you to tell me what to do. Do I need to go apply for another apartment? Because I know sometimes it takes a long time for these apartment processes. Like I said, the last time it took a week. And I'm like, I don't have, like, there was some, uh, a friend of the family on my uh, ex husband's side that lives here. You know, she said that I could stay there with her, but it's her, her, it's her, her um, son and her daughter and grandson. I didn't, like, it was cool. I appreciated her saying I could stay there, but I didn't want to be there with my daughter. So I'm like, man, Lord, I don't want to do this. Like, you going <laughs> so I need some direction. So I went on a fast. When I went on the fast, I came on here and said, look, I'm going on a fast. If anybody wants to go on a fast with me, this is what I'm doing. I have a prayer group. I said, join this group. We got, if you got, you need something from God, 
I need something from God. Because let me tell y'all something, which I tell y'all all the time. Anytime I'm leading you, I'm leading from the front of my experience. I'm not coming out here blowing no smoke up and acting like I got all my stuff together because I still need God. Like I need him. I can't do it. I can't lead anybody. I can't, I can't be in business. I can't do anything without him. Right? So I needed some direction from God. So I know when I need something, others need something. So I got on here and I said, look, y'all, I'm about to do a fast from 6 to 6. And y'all know I love to eat. And 6 to 6 left my mouth so fast, but that's what my church used to do, right? I'm not an avid faster. That ain't my thing because I'm an eater, right? But I was like, if I need something from God, I got to do something extreme, right? So I was like 6 to 6. And I said, Lord, well, how long? He said, 5 days. All right, bet. Monday through Friday, we're going to do 5 days of fasting. So, y'all, I ain't going to front like a few days. The first day was terrible. My head was hurting. I felt horrible. You know, then the second day when I was trying to lead the group in prayer and doing all this stuff and trying to pray for other people, I'm telling you, I felt like almost like an impo like the imposter syndrome, like, it was like the enemy was even talking to me while I was praying. Like, how are you praying for these people? Like, you don't have no experience. Like, who you think you are? Like, just really, like, while I'm praying, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, how am I leading these people in this fast when I don't even know what I'm doing myself, right? I just, I know I'm desperate for, for an answer from God. Like, I need something from him, right? And so, but I'm still, like, in the midst of me needing my, the people that are with me need something too. And they trust me. And so, I'm just like, okay, Lord, it ain't me. It's you so i need you to show up for these people right i need you to show up for them but i need you to show up for me so day two was kind of hard day three i went to the um the office and talked to the lady and she was playing in my face she was playing in my face and I and I had already prayed before I got out the car. I was like, I don't even know if I need to go find a uh, another apartment or do I need to hold on. But I felt like God was saying, sit still. And I'm like, Lord, what what you mean? Like, I'm about to be homeless. What do you mean, sit still? But here's the crazy part: this my inner man, my spirit man was super duper calm. And that's how I know, like, everything was going to be okay. Did I know exactly what was going to happen? No, I didn't. But I knew things were going to work out because my spirit was super duper calm. Like, it was just like, but my flesh was on a thousand. Because how many of y'all know, I don't know if anybody has faced homelessness, but let me tell you something. It, I haven't. And I love stability. I'm all about stability. If don't nothing else get paid, you pay the main thing that needs to be paid. Your roof, your food, your water, your shelter, all of that, the phone, like the basic stuff. I don't play about that, right? And so I prayed before I got in there because I didn't want to have an attitude and I didn't want to, you know, like frustrate her because I already know I'm a problem client now, right? So I go, I pray, Lord, let her be able to receive. I talked to my homegirl, Adana, before I went in. She was like, you know, just calm down, pray, blah, blah. So, okay, I go in. Y'all, the look on her face was like, what do you want? I knew from right then, I was like, oh, they never going to be here. I didn't say nothing. But I was like, yeah, nah, they ain't even, nah, she ain't fooling with me. <laughs> like, she ain't fooling with me. And so I was like, where's your supervisor? And then she lied to me. And let me tell you something. Side note, I used to lie for fun. Did y'all hear what I said? Back in the day, I used to lie for fun. So one of, I, one of the things I can pick up from people, two things I can pick up from people is a liar. Like when you, like you can be the best liar ever. But let me tell you something. I can pick that thing up in 2.3 seconds. And the other thing that I can pick up is lust. If you have a spirit of lust, I can pick both of those up super quick because I dealt with both. Right? All right. So... When I came in there, I was like, where's your supervisor? She was like, well, she's she's not here. Now, mind you, I look over to the right and her door is open. Quit playing with me, right? All right, so I let her talk. I said, when is she going to be back? Mm, you can probably check back Friday. I don't know. Gal, you know when that listen to me. Quit playing with me. You know when your supervisor is going to be back. Stop playing. I said, okay, cool. I said, judging by your response on your email, let me see what you have in my file. Y'all, do you know this girl went and pulled up everything on my file and reprinted it? She pulled up everything on my file and reprinted it. The stuff that the supervisor tore up and threw away. Y'all, I was through. Because mind you, I told you the supervisor said, if you turn this in, they will deny you. They will deny you. Plus, they didn't want to fool with all the paperwork. I was like, oh my gosh. So then I went to the court. Y'all, I cried. Listen to me. I cried all day Wednesday. Because I, I was like, I can't be out here in this 
in this place homeless, it's not going to be enough time for me to find somewhere. Like, I can't be out here. And so, um, I cried for like a minute. For those who know me, like, I'm, I'm sensitive, but I'm a fighter. Mm. And I know there's, there's people who are rooting for me, like, to, like, I hope Reagan gets out there and she wins and she does it. But there's some people, like, she coming back to Knoxville. She's going to fail. She ain't going to do, like, she just talking. She, and that inside of me was like, I can't go back. Like, even the thought of going back to Knoxville, I, that's when I snapped out of it because I was like, I'm not going back. Like, because Knoxville having the same problem as far as, like, apartments. And I'm like, if I made it in Knoxville, I can make it here. And, and I was just like, this ain't, like, I got to figure something out. So I cried half, I'm, most of all day Wednesday, wiped my face, got up, looked in the mirror, and I said, devil is on. Like, God, I'm finna go out, go out in these streets and hustle. I said, put your supernatural on my natural. Put your super on my natural, and I'm finna get in the street and find me somewhere to stay. And listen to me, I had two days. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Thursday, I got up at 4.30 in the morning. I made a list. No, let me back up. Wednesday, the Holy Spirit told me to call this lady who called me maybe like a month ago. It was a, a apartment locator. So what they have here, most of the realtors here are apartment locators. So if anybody ever wants to move here uh, and rent, they have a free service that are apartment locators. They will tell you, like pull all these places to live. And it is a free service. This lady called me about a month ago, and at the time, I didn't think I needed her because, again, I got approved for this apartment, so I didn't think I needed her. So the Holy Spirit said, call her. I'm like, Lord, I didn't save her name because I told her I had an apartment. He said, she texted you because she did. She followed up with me maybe two weeks ago and was like, uh, hey, did you find an apartment, blah, 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 and I didn't respond to her. Holy Spirit said, call her. Find her, find her and call her. So I found her after I went through all my text messages. I called her. I said, look. I don't know your name. I remember talking to you. you. We had a whole conversation about your husband being saved and you being, or you being saved. Your husband wasn't saved. He used to drink. Now he's saved. Like we had a whole good Holy Ghost conversation, but I told you that I had somewhere, so I didn't need you. I said, but I'm in a pickle. I said, it's Wednesday. I got to be out of my apartment by 10 a.m. on Saturday. They have rented it out and I don't have nowhere to go. And I said, I need to move somewhere quickly because I've been holding on waiting for this apartment to process my paperwork. They have not done it. And I said, and I don't know when it's going to be done, but I can't afford not to have a transition. I felt her pick me up in the spirit. I literally, like a mama, like, you know how you'll call your mama. I don't know who, if y'all mama raggedy, I'm not talking to y'all. But like, if I call my mama right now and say, mama, listen, X, Y, and Z, I need some help. And she's going to um, be like, what you need? Like, she ain't going to say it like that because my mama's real proper. <laughs> she's going to say, Reagan, what do you need? But she's going to be concerned, right? Um, the lady picked me up in the spirit. She was like, look, I'm at Walmart at the checkout. Listen to me. She said, I'm at Walmart at the checkout. Give me 20 minutes. She said, I'm going to be right home. I'm going to send you a list of apartments. She said, how much do you make? I told her. I said, how much I wanted to pay? I said, I want uh, a, a nice place in this area. I don't want no roaches. Side note, Houston is known for roaches. Uh, I don't care what kind of house you stay in, what kind of apartment, because of the trees and the palm trees here, they have different types of roaches. So it ain't like the dirty roaches because it's, they come from the trees. Now, if you dirty, then you got them roaches. But they have flying roaches, and they are huge. Like, listen, they listen to me. These are some different type of roaches. Flying roaches, crawling roaches, they are everywhere. And so... It's normal here. It ain't normal for me because I ain't standing over with no roaches. Do you understand me? I'm not doing it. Okay? All right. So here you have to have a top, like a top grade, like a exterminator. You have to, right? Okay. So I told her, she said, okay, give me 20 minutes. I checked my email in 20 minutes. Guess what? She sent me a list of people that she had already called, gave me their names, gave me the prices, said, you're going to qualify uh, for this inside note, a lot of the apartments, it depends. You have to make two times the rent, two time, 2.5 or three times, right? Most people don't make three times. I, listen, especially in the middle income, but we'll talk about that another time. All right. So she gave me the list, told me who to talk to. I came up with my own list and I said, Thursday, I'm pounding the payment. 
Thursday morning came 4.30. I'm coming up with my list. I'm looking at her list. I spent all day Thursday in Houston trying to find an apartment. And let me tell y'all something. I'm low-key bougie. Just a little just a little bit. I'm not putting my head just anywhere. I'm just I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. But when you come down in price, like I said, I only wanted to pay about twelve hundred dollars. When you come down in price, some of these places look like the projects. I'm not doing that. I'm not I'm not doing it. And I solved some of those. I'm like, yeah, the price is right, but I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. And then I was like, Well, Lord, can I afford to be this way when I only got two days to move? Like can I afford to be over here time better? I don't want to stay here. Cause, no, I, I got to be comfortable, right? I do. And so, um, went a whole bunch of places and it was starting to get late. <clears throat> I said, let me, it was one other place. The lady was like, well, come on and bring me your money, blah, blah, blah. I, I said, when the apartment going to be ready? She said, well, I don't know. I said, you think I'm going to bring you $300 and this apartment ain't ready? Uh, ma'am, no, ma'am. I need to be gone by Saturday. But there was an apartment around the corner, because I did want to stay there, but there's an apartment around the corner that was on the ladies list. Went to that apartment. I said, let me, let me just try. Let me just try this. Let This was my last apartment, child. The last one. If this didn't work, I ain't know. We got to get started again on Friday. Okay. Got there. Listen to me. Miss Anna. Sweet as pie. With nobody in the office but me, her, and another coworker. That coworker ended up leaving. Miss Anna was so nice. We ended up talking about Jesus. Let me tell you how, let me tell you, let me, I'm going to tell y'all about Jesus in a minute, but Miss Anna was saved. Miss Anna was sweet. Miss Anna took me around the apartment. Miss Anna walked me around. Um, we had a little conversation. Um, just talked about Jesus, talked about church, talked about kid. Listen, me and Miss Anna had a good time. She said, when you need to move in? I said, Saturday. Miss Anna didn't flinch. She said, oh, I can do that. All we need to do is make sure your credit score is straight, your background is straight, you don't have no evictions or nothing. And I said, no. She said, it shouldn't be no problem. How much money do you make? I said, I make this. I said, I already got my pay stubs. She said, all I need is your pay stubs and your social security. Thank you. Make sure you make enough money. So, y'all, why was I approved in like 30 minutes? Did y'all hear what I said? I was approved in 30 minutes. She said, you can move in Saturday. Y'all listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Y'all don't know how scared I was. That I did not think I was going to have somewhere to stay because of the short notice. Because of the short notice. Then you have to have all this money like to move. And I was just like, but I ended up not having to pay like all of what I thought I was going to pay in the front. Like I had to pay my rent at the other place, which even that was prorated. That was $1,800. <sighs> the application fee ended up... Okay, side note, because somebody need to hear this. If you plan on moving here, if you plan on moving to Houston, because I've gotten a lot of messages about moving to Houston and you moving to an apartment, you will never pay over $500 for a deposit here. If you decide to move, move at the end of the month, like the 30th, 31st, the 29th, move around that time because what happens is they have a bunch of specials. They have a bunch of specials. So my special for moving in to this place where I'm at now, which is stuff everywhere, the special is I pay $50 for the application. I did not have to pay a deposit because it was waived because it was at the end of the month. Um, and I had to pay like $150 uh, once I was approved to get in, right? Um, my rent is like $12.68, something like that. But it includes a whole bunch of stuff my other apartment didn't even include. I'm going to be honest. I am now in the city of Houston. Before I was way out there so i'm not like in in like the mix of it but i'm about like i'm in houston but i'm about 15 20 minutes away from the actual city but i'm still like in the city so i can go down the street around the corner like i'm in the cut then i come out and i'm right there so i really like y'all listen to me like this place is perfect for me 
where I'm at now is perfect for me. Where I am right now is perfect for me. It feels safe. It feels like home. I'm with my people. Like I'm really with my people now. Um, I, I thank God for like my friend. Let me tell you something. The friends that I have, I really want to call them out. Katrina Chesney, Edana Blocker, Lorinda, um, Lorinda Pye, keep wanting to call her Slay, Lorinda Pye Slay, um, Kendra Eskew, Crystal Taylor. Um, I, man, I don't want to miss nobody, but I'm telling y'all, thank y'all for even picking up the phone. Thank you, Kanika White, because she called and prayed with me like, thank y'all for picking up the phone. Like, thank y'all for being there, because listen your friendship circle like you don't know who you got till something gets to popping off and i literally was talking to them every, like y'all i don't know and my friend dana was like i knew not to call you <laughs> and that's a good thing too because you want to have you want to have friends that can pick you up in the spirit and when i say and a lot of people don't can't flow with this but this is how we do because i'm a christian i believe in the holy spirit and my friends know me so and you got to know me by the spirit that's why i said you got to be anointed to be my friend for real for real and dana was like i wasn't calling you she said i just felt like i wasn't supposed to call and i said you're right because i had like god literally had me like in the corner like either you gonna trust me or not and this was a situation where my faith had literally been tested for real life i'm a faith walker i'm a faith walker but let me tell you something. This was on a whole nother situation, a whole nother level where you feel like, Lord, you got me uh, 14 hours away from my house. You got me 14 hours away from my house. And you're talking about I'm going to be on somebody's couch with my daughter. Uh-uh. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I don't want that. I don't want that. Like, you got to come through for me. But he said, he he knows that we have need of before we ask. But it's either like, are you going to trust me or not? But it almost kind of brought me to the same situation before I moved here. I had sold my house. I didn't have nowhere to stay here. I was waiting on the apartment building to, like, come through. But all in all, I learned a whole lot from this. Like, I heard, like, literally I can write down a whole bunch of stuff I learned. But one of the big takeaways that I learned is how to treat people. How to treat people. Literally stop and start learning how to treat people better. Because how they treat it. And here's another thing, which I guess is, is good for me, but it can be bad. A lot of people count my pockets. A lot of people count my pockets. A lot of people think I got like stupid money. It's always been that way. I remember I hollered at my cousin Jordan when it was time to drive Uber Eats. And I was like, hey, cuz, why you ain't tell me about Uber Eats? Like, it's popping. Are you making all this money? He was like, cuz, I ain't think nothing. I thought you had it. Don't ever think that. I remember I had an event where I hired this um, this um, chef to come in and do something. And I pulled up in a, my husband's Benz at the time. Well, she was like, oh, well, I forgot to add this and this and that. So she charged me $200 because you saw me roll up in a Benz. You think we got money. People always do that to me. And one of the things that the girl said at the apartment building was, well, we know judging on your business and judging on this and judging on that, you can pay the $1,800. I can, but I don't want to. And if I'm eligible to pay the 12, I need to pay the 12. I want to be able to pay this rent with my eyes closed. I don't want to have to think about paying rent. I want to have a quality of life while I'm here. I like to go out and eat. I like to go out and enjoy myself. My daughter and I are going to the movies this weekend. Like, I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to be stressed out about paying $2,100 in rent because I got some marble countertops. That's for me and my husband when he comes. This time next year, I'll be married. So we'll have the big old house with the marble uh, countertops and all that stuff. And $2,100 will be a drop in the bucket because he got it right right but right now that ain't what i'm on i'm not on trying to look luxurious and have i not i need a clean place to stay that don't have roaches and this place don't have roaches i need people who care about the community which we have that with miss anna and i have somewhere like my daughter's in a good school system which she's still gonna be at her other school but even if i decide to transfer her she's still in a good school system right i don't want her to have any lack or insufficiency and neither does my father right and so I just wanted to say all in all, like, shout out to my friends. 
shout out to God first of all God who Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life listen to me without him I'm nothing and I just I'm appreciative because this place for me is perfect it is perfect it is perfect now Kenny was talking about my life I just don't understand that's because we don't have the marble countertops like we were like we had before I, and that's okay that's okay I don't care nothing about that when your stepdaddy comes we're gonna have all of that but right now we're straight we're right now we're straight we're next to everything her therapist is literally down the street, like three minutes away. We are near everything. We're near better food. We're near everything. And I like being in the heart of the city. Because when I do my business, guess where I got to go? Into the city. Right? And so, you know, naturally, I can be mad at the other people. Like, I legit want to call, I mean, do a Google review on these people because I feel like, I don't want to say discriminated against, but they really felt like I was trying to get over on them. And the girl literally told me, like, well, we're going to just take your business and account and all this stuff and your houses and all this stuff. And I really believe they went on my Facebook page. I'm going to be honest. I feel that in my spirit. I do. And people, like I say, have a perception of me. Okay, great. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. Listen, I keep trying to tell y'all. But my cousin said, Ray, can you present a certain way? Okay, girl. Whatever. But I believe, and they kept trying to force me to say, well, you know, you can pay this $1,800. I don't even think they turned my paperwork in. I'm going to be really, really honest because they felt like I could pay the $1,800. I can, but I'm not. I don't have nothing to prove. I'm not paying on $1,800. I'm not doing it. And I don't have to. I don't have to. I pay my 12 and my internet and everything is connected. My cable, all that's in here with this. I had to pay extra out there. And I got free nights and weekends on electricity here. What? I'm saving. Now I'm going to be couponing. I, listen, my quality of life is about to go up 300 million times. And guess what? I'm going to have some money in the bank. Because the money that I'm saving from not paying rent there is going to be in my bank account. And I'm going to be investing. Right? And then getting on with my business and not being so stressed out about rent and stuff. Right? What would you say? Trying to all things work together for good for those who... Exactly. And like Trina was an intricate part in this. Listen, I, she just was. And I just, I thank God for her. I thank God for her. I thank God for her. And side note, for those who always say, well, I ain't no, have no new friend, ain't no new friends. I met Trina through Facebook. Trina came to one of my events and we've been cool ever since. So for those who try to cut people off talking about, oh, well, you know, I don't know her. I'm not just listening. And I said I was going to do a video on this. You got to get healed from relationships. Like you have to, you have to, you have to, you have, especially if you're going to be in business or do it, not even business, but in anything, if you have a ministry, if you have anything that you're supposed to be doing, if God has given you a vision to do something, you can't do it by yourself. Yes, you may have one person, but if it's real big and it's to meet other people's needs, you cannot do it by yourself. You have to have help. And that help is not going to always be from people that you know. It's going to be from other people outside. Most of the people that are cool with me or I'm cool with and I hang with, I met them from social media. And they support me all the same. Like they've been knowing me all my life. I had somebody call me today like, girl, what's going on? You talking about you homeless? Girl, you should know by now I'm not finna be homeless. Like y'all know me. Like y'all know for, for number one, y'all know the God I serve. He is not finna leave me out here. But y'all know I got too much hustle to be out here in the street. And it's too hot to be in somebody's car. I'm not doing it. And I like to be comfortable. Well, what are we doing? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Like I'm not doing it. And my God will not allow it. He's not going to allow it. And he gave me the perfect place. Listen to me. The perfect place to stay. It's not too big. I, like I'm right here in the city. I'm right here and I'm paying what I want to pay. And I'm getting way more than what I was getting. Even And then here's a, a side note. Another thing. If you want to come here and live in Houston, don't look at the word luxury. Don't look at the word luxury. Because where I was paying at $2,000 that they said luxury and my bathroom was peeling. No ma'ams, no sirs. It's not luxury. Okay? All right. Like naked eye, if you ain't used to something, it might be luxury. But if you used to seeing some stuff and you see luxury in my bathroom peeling, am I, I don't know. I'm not paying for that. Like what I was paying for was not, yeah, nah. So, like I said, if you ain't used to nothing, it could have been luxury to you, but it wasn't to me. And so I have way more amenities here at a cheaper price and I'm closer to the city. Um, Kendra, what did you say? I learned that God sends us who we need uh, and not who we want. Actually, yeah, he sends us both. Now, I don't know about you, 
I don't know about you, but he sends, sends us both. Now, I got a friend named Kendra who always says God gives us some of what we want and all of what we need. And let me tell you something. He absolutely does. The friends that I have right now is some of what I want and all of what I need, I think, a little bit. My husband that's coming to me is going to be all of what I want and all of what I need. All of it. I love it because God knows if he sent me something looking crazy, I listen, I don't know because I ain't going to be able to do it. I don't, he, he, I don't want it, God. He know it. He knows it. But anyway, um, so for those who came on here and thought I was homeless, I'm not. I was not homeless, not one day. I was facing homelessness. Uh, but um, I'm not. God turned that thing around. He help, uh, used people to help uh, turn that thing around. Uh, I thank you for the people who have spoken into my life. I also thank the people who have talked about me um, because you need both of those. <laughs> like you just, you need both of those. And I am just grateful for the position I'm in. Like it's really a faith walk to still be here. I love Houston. Uh, the only thing, like I said, I don't particularly like is like the driving. Like the driving here is very cutthroat. Like you better. It's like move, be, get out the way. That ludicrous, listen, you get rolled, you rolled or you get rolled on. Um, but the people here are lovely. The cost of living is still good. Like you can get a whole three a bedroom house. Like I just saw uh, some today in a neighborhood out in Conroe. Uh, they got brand new houses for $80,000. Three bedrooms, two baths. Um, brand new, $150,000. Like the cost of living here is great. Like I said, um, if you are middle income, they have programs for you to uh, just like they have low income and you don't have to stay in the low, low income areas if you do not want to. They still have apartments here for six fifty. Do you want to stay in them? Probably not. But if you need to get on your feet, you can absolutely come here and do it. Um, I did want to touch on what I talked about this morning just really, really quick. For those who have an ear to hear, start getting your health together. I'm going to be working on it. it listen to me. I'm an eater, but I can tell God is changing my palate. Please start drinking more water, taking your vitamins, zinc, elderberry, uh, get teas, ginger teas, um, peppermint teas, uh, vitamins, anything that is going to make sure that your immune system is top tier. Start stocking up on that stuff right now. Um, start vegetables, supplements, um, just trying to keep, you know, exercise. Get your immune system together. It's some stuff coming down the pike. COVID is back up. Uh, I think some other stuff is going to be coming back up and we're going to be in the house. Y'all, listen, I've had a dream two nights in a row. If you believe me, cool. If not, cool. Not talking to you. Uh, but for those, prepare. Start getting toilet tissue. At Listen, side note, Walgreens has been the spot for toilet tissue. Walgreens has been the st a spot for paper towels. I'm not going to gatekeep on any of this stuff. Uh, washing powders, um, Walgreens, uh, toothpaste, Dollar Tree. Start stocking up on that stuff so you don't have to be rushing out here to the store. If you got to get a water filter, do that. If you got to buy a bottled water, do that. If you got to get like canned goods, those type of things, non-perishable items, start stocking up on that stuff. If you buy meat, go to Chicken City, go to Butcher's, start buying extra, wrap them up, clean it up freeze dry put it in the the freezer um also make sure if you are if you pray over your food pray over everything if there's and i always say this every time i eat lord if there's anything unclean in this please remove that's going to harm me please remove it in the mighty name of jesus it's some stuff coming down the pipe they're going to be trying to put it in food you can hear me if you want to if not i'm not talking to you um be careful keep your hands very clean the wipes antibacterial wipes Keep those with you. Uh, go ahead and get y'all some more masks. Um, yeah. Also, um, I talked about this as well. If you, um, God is really dealing with a lot of people about moving and their spouses. So, uh, I'm going to touch on moving real quick. And there's some people who need to move. There are some people that need to move. There are some people that need to move. Where you are at is too small for you. You need to move because God wants to make sure that you're thriving, but you're not. It's also to answer questions. You know, you're somebody else's answer for their blessing. He also wants to get you to safety. 
there's some uh, places that are about to get hit and God wants you out of the way. Okay. Um, as far as spouses are concerned, I talked about this too. Some spouses have passed away. Some need to get a divorce or have gotten a divorce. Either one of the three. It has happened for a reason or is happening for a reason. Uh, I prophesied over one person. Well, actually a few, but I'm just going to give a name. Not a name. I don't give names. But God has shown me that their husband was going to pass away. And I called and told her. I was like, hey, no, we no, that's what happened. We prayed about it because uh, she was going through a thing. And she called me and prayed and we prayed. And I said, Lord, your will be done quickly. Your will be done quickly. Your will be done quickly. Because I didn't know how to pray in the situation because of what she told me. And I didn't want to get my flesh in the way. I said, your will be done quickly, Lord. And what ended up happening is it's 12 days, uh, not 12 days, 12 hours later, she called me and said her husband was in the hospital. Two months later, he passed away. And I don't know the timeline, but he passed away. Now, what I'm saying is, do we want that to happen? Absolutely not. We don't want that to happen. But what I know about God is, what I know about God is he, if he has a call on your life and there is somebody in the way of that call, he will remove them if you don't. And I've seen it happen. I, I'm like, I'm a testimony when my ex-husband passed away. If he did not pass away, I would not be able to move to Houston. It, it ain't happening. I wouldn't be able to date. All right. So in this season, God is bringing together couples very quickly, very, very, very quickly. The husband and wife like in the earth it's important. He's bringing them together quickly. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, dating. I've had some dates here. Um, my last guy, which I am not going to really talk about my dating experience like I'm going to keep some things, but I've enjoyed the last guy I dated. I en really enjoyed <laughs> dating him. Um, he showed me a lot of stuff that I had not ever seen before. Uh, I experienced a lot of things with him that I had not experienced in any relationship, relationship particularly my ex-husband, particularly. I'm very tired, side note. <laughs> but... Um, you know, even though we don't talk anymore, which is cool, uh, I still learned a lot. And that's one of the things that I do and I suggest everybody does. Whoever I come into contact with, I make sure that I pull something from them, that I'm learning something from them because I like learning uh, just about things in general. But also while I'm dating, I'm learning about myself, right? You know, because I give wonderful advice. Listen, I give really, really good advice. But when it comes to me taking it, it's like, hold up, Reagan, what are you doing? Like, are you even equipped? Because <laughs> you're not following what you said. Uh, but anyway, dating here has been cool. I've been kind of cool in the gang on it. Uh, but I'm going to be outside a little bit. Now that I'm in the city, like I actually live, live in the city now. Not too much, but y'all know this time next year, mark my words, this time next year, I will be married, okay? Go on and get your dresses ready. Get your dresses ready. This time next year, I will be married to the kingdom spouse that my my father, Jesus Christ, is going to send me. So get your dresses ready, okay? <laughs> but anyway, long story short, I'm not homeless for those who just joined. You got to go back and catch the replay. I told the whole story. God came in and swooped his home girl out of the mouth of the enemy because listen we was about to be on the street um but god and so i love houston i love everything about it i love the culture of the city the heartbeat of the city i love my church i know a lot of people tune in to pastor keon henderson online um it's just it's a right fit for me um it's it's like every day is a confirmation of what God is telling me and what he has told me. Going back to people who need to move, you need to move. If God is dealing with you um, about moving to another city or another state, you need to listen. Uh, if you do not, that it's literally a matter of life and death. And I mean mentally, spiritually, and physically. Uh, a lot of uh, you need to move because you're not being productive. You're not doing what he has called you to do. You're just barely getting along and barely making it. And he wants you to thrive. Uh, 
So anyway, if anybody has any questions, and I said this the last time I did this on my last YouTube video, and literally my phone has not stopped ringing. Like I literally get a call from somebody on YouTube like once or twice a month. Uh, people who just want to talk to me about what God is doing in their life with coming to moving into Houston. Uh, and I'm grateful to even just be here because I know God has called me to people. And I love people now. I, sometimes I get tired of people and I need a break. Um, but all of my experiences, I experience them not just for me but for others. And I can tell you, you know, God is a provider because... Listen, he did it in the nick of time. I can tell you fasting works because he did it in the nick of time. When you deny your flesh, uh, he did it in the nick of time, right? And some people are like, well, I just don't believe that, and that's fine. But I'm going to tell you what works for me. And when you see me thrive, you know how I thrive because I pressed into Jesus. Now, was it a perfect press? Nah. And did I do it without crying and like, oh, Lord, what we going to do? Mm-mm, I didn't. Mm-mm, I did not. All right? <laughs> So anyway, for those who missed the story, go back and watch it, y'all. Listen, I love Houston, Texas. I love Houston, Texas. I love it. If y'all want to come and visit, come in October. It's too hot in the summer. Listen, it's now starting to cool off. Like today, it was like, the high was like 94, which is great. Because the other day, it was like 110. So summertime, cancel Christmas. Don't come. Best time to come is like October and the winter months around that time. Like winter, fall best time to come if y'all want to come see me hit my inbox you know we can go to brunch or do whatever uh but my car turns into a pumpkin at 10 or we because mm -mm, i don't go out and stuff like that you know my friends be like right hey, you gotta get out i'm not doing it but anyway y'all thank you for supporting me for those who do support me those who don't and those who talk about me listen it's all a part of god's plan i am grateful for all of you guys who support me i'm grateful for just being here. I'm grateful for what God is doing. Uh, and I pray that he does a supernatural miracle in your lives. Um, and that's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. I'm about to take a shower and I'm going to bed. <laughs> but you got, listen, I do. Cause I don't play around girl. I'll be in the bed. Cause I get up early. I get up about five, five thirty. So I try to go to bed early. But anyway, so hopefully this is my, um, uh, my God is about to bring me can can deal with it because all of these late night mm -mm, pumpkin bedtime <laughs> I'm tired now but anyway you guys have a blessed night this is your girl Reagan Adams with all things Reagan oh if you got any questions about Houston inbox me or you can call me I'm going to get my number out again I don't have my Houston number I don't, haven't uh, memorized it I got two phones can't remember my Houston number, so I'll just give you my main number, 865-235-9885. I'm probably going to be sorry because I'm going to put this video on YouTube again. But to God be the glory, who he sends me is who he sends me, and I'm happy to deal with his people, most of them. Anyway, you guys have a blessed night. This is your girl, Reagan Adams with all things Reagan and Reagan says. I think it, I see it, I do it, and I'm not homeless. Bye!